In this video, I want to show you guys how I'm going to get our environment set up for our example files. So yeah, it, this series is kind of academic in nature. There's going to be a lot of discussion about topics such as scoping and, and the prototype and the nature of of the this keyword and all the all that fun stuff that often really really trips up people new to JavaScript and the stuff that I I really honestly believe is necessary to understand to go forward with learning JavaScript, but. The examples that I'm going to be showing are mostly just going to be academic in nature, and as a result, it's not necessary that you guys follow along. However, I do recommend that you guys do type stuff out. It's very, I think it's very important to kind of solidify your knowledge by typing things out as, as we go along, even though we're not building a project or anything like that in this series. So I'm going to be, you're really just going to need two things if, if you do want to follow along. Uh, you're going to need two things. You're going to need Node installed, and you're going to need a code editor. And I imagine you guys already have a favorite code editor. In this series, I'm going to be using the awesome Visual Studio Code. Uh, Visual Studio Code is an excellent editor that I've been using in my last couple of courses. And uh, and I've said it in my last couple of courses, it's kind of become my de facto HTML, CSS, JavaScript, TypeScript editor. I don't really use Visual Studio anymore for anything other than C Sharp. So uh, awesome editor, cross-platform, super fast, has all the features you'll need, and looks fantastic. So that's the editor that I'm going to be using. And uh, so to actually run our examples. Now, uh, I, I, you know, I could, I could write HTML and JavaScript files on my hard drive and just load them up with Chrome and all that fun stuff. But in order to make things a little bit, uh, give us a little bit of a tighter feedback loop, I want to use a, a, a program, a package called something called a live server. And it's this fantastic utility that comes uh, from the Node Package Manager. And if you don't know what that is, I'll, I'll explain it in a second. It's a fantastic program that will serve out a folder in any arbitrary directory on your file system uh, as a web server. But then as you edit your files, every time you hit Control S, it'll automatically refresh. And that will give us a nice tight feedback loop and and uh, prevent me from having to hit F5 and all that fun stuff. It's something that once you start uh, playing around with JavaScript and doing these little test projects, it's it's a really fun utility to have. And, and um, I want to, I guess, encourage people to know of its existence and take advantage of it in their own uh, little playgrounds or whatever you guys are, are working on. So basically, this the rest of this video, is uh, what I'm going to do is describe what Node and NPM is and show you guys how to install live server. It's really, really, really straightforward. If you already have Node and NPM installed, if you know what that, those things are, just go ahead and install the package live-server and install it globally, so with the dash G flag. But uh, and then you can skip this video. But for everybody who might not have ever installed Node or maybe have never heard of Node, I want to spend the rest of the video kind of describing what it is, how to get it installed, and all that fun stuff. So yeah, stuff and things. Uh, to put simply, Node is nothing more than a JavaScript runtime. It allows you to run JavaScript from your command line. So from your terminal if you're on Mac OS or Linux, or from your, your con host if you're on Windows, you can run JavaScript programs on your desktop without a browser. And basically what they did to make Node is they took the open source V8 JavaScript engine from Chrome and they ripped it out of Chrome and made it so you can run it basically without being in a browser. And Node, Node is used for a lot of different things. It's used for primarily web servers. People like writing Node web servers for a variety of reasons. Uh, there are certain advantages and some disadvantages to using Node as a backend web server, but it's certainly a viable option. It's gained a lot of support in the last uh, couple of years. Microsoft's team dubbed with Node has fantastic Windows support now. And um, yeah, stuff and things. So Node is a runtime. All it does is it, is it runs JavaScript code in a command line window. That's it. That JavaScript code could be a script that uh, performs, I don't know, whatever you want it to do. I wrote a Node program to send newsletters off to Amazon's email service, and that works great. Uh, people, like I said, use it for web servers or, or utilities or whatever they want. And NPM, or the Node Package Manager, is a package manager. Well, it's kind of in the name. And what it is, is it allows you to download all the packages that have been published by the open source Node community for use and reuse in your own applications. And some of those packages are things like <laughs> LeftPad. Uh, that was, a, that was a fiasco. But, um, you know, simple utility libraries in JavaScript to give you certain JavaScript code, modular JavaScript code that you can reuse in your own applications. And some of those packages are 
full applications, like actual things that we can run from our command line. And, and we're not going to be using Node to run any of our code, but we are going to be using a utility that comes from the Node ecosystem. And that's why we're going to have to in install it. So we're going to need both the Node runtime itself to run that package, as well as the Node package manager to acquire it. So installation is very straightforward. Uh, if you have Mac OS or Windows, you will get a fancy little installer. And I'm going to be installing, or I have installed just uh, now because I had to upgrade, uh, version 6.1.0. So go ahead and grab that installer. It'll be an MSI for Windows or um, whatever package format for Mac OS. And it'll run you through a wizard and just check all the options and everything will be awesome. If you're on Linux, I'm sure your distribution has a instance of Node and NPM in your package manager and aptitude or, or whatever. So um, once you have that installed, you might have to restart your computer. That's that's one important thing because it is going to manipulate your, your path environment variables um, so that we can access Node and NPM from our command line from anywhere in our system. So you may have to restart, you may not, but just to check, you can open up your terminal or your command line and you should be able to type in node dash dash version. Or whoops, dash dash version, not dash dash dash. And you should get a 610. Um, assuming you just installed that version. And it's actually possible that you didn't get 6.1.0, even if you just installed it, and that would be due to a padding conflict. Um, you should also be able to do npm dash dash version. And get, uh, in this case, I have 3.8.6 installed. So uh, when I say padding conflict, some, some things like, especially Visual Studio, will come with its own installation of Node and do some awful things to your path environment variable. So if you did not get the correct versions, always go ahead and uh, open up your environment variables settings and go to environment variables and check your path. So for me, I do have in my system path, I should have a um, a thing all the way down here, C program files x86 node.js. And again, if you're, if you're not on Windows 10, your path environment variable dialog box is gonna look really ugly. So you'll have to scroll through and that's just a madness. But anyway, so down here I have this. So this is the proper uh, location of where node is going to be installed. And then in your user environment variables under your path, you should have an entry for C users, your username, app data, roaming, NPM. And this path is where NPM is going to install global utilities that are accessible from anywhere in your command line. You, know, you must have these paths installed. If you see other things that aren't either one of these two of these paths that references node, go ahead and delete them to make sure that your path is pointing to the appropriate installation of node, the one that you just installed, the latest version. Because like I said, Visual Studio um, or other IDEs might do some, some nasty things there. But assuming that you have both those path environment variables set up and uh, you've restarted your computer if you needed to, if you weren't able to get no to print a version. Now let's go ahead and install live server. So that's really easy to do with NPM. We simply do NPM install dash g now make sure to put in that dash g i'll talk i'll tell you guys what it does in a second live dash server so that's the command you're going to want to run so the live server is the package that we want and go ahead and hit enter and it'll go out it'll grab live server all its dependencies and it'll install it and as you see i already had it installed in fact it'll tell me where it installed it which is a path that should look kind of familiar this is the same path that showed up in my uh, path environment variable so we see that um, it installed this globally on my entire system, and that's what the dash G flag did. If you admitted the dash G flag, it would have literally installed live server into whatever directory that we're in right now, which would not be good. But like I said, that folder, roaming npm is where the actual live server cmd lives so whenever i type in live server on my command prompt anywhere in my system it's actually running this cmd right here so that's why the path is so important now let's go ahead and see if live server is working so i'm not going to actually start live server but i'm going to do live server dash dash help so make sure you can run that command successfully don't run live server without command line arguments we'll talk about that what happens when you do that in the next video but um to complete this video if you're again if you're wanting to follow along check out live server type out all the stuff you should be able to now type in live dash server from any directory on your computer uh, dash dash help and you should get an output um, if you did not get this output then you have a pathing problem so you're going to want to make sure that uh, that you set your path environment variables appropriately and you've restarted your computer if you made alterations to them 
so anyway, just to recap, we are not writing Node.js code, but it's a uh, but it's a runtime that's going to allow us to run a utility that we're going to be using to write our examples in. And um, if you're a JavaScript developer, it's also really handy to have Node.js laying around your system just to, uh, if you wanted to write like a one-off JavaScript file just to test it, you don't care about having a browser or anything, you could write, you know, a JavaScript file, then you just type a node and then path to file.js, and it'll execute that in a command line window. So it's a fantastic way to, um, to test out JavaScript outside of a browser. But if you have no interest in Node, that's okay too. All we need it for, again, is for live server. And with that, I think that wraps this video up. In the next video, we're going to be talking about, um, we're just going to be writing a basic HTML file. That's going to be our kind of test harness for all of our JavaScript. And we'll see you guys then.